This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We want to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Light Blended Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C, Hannah Green, Neralia, Jordan Gower, Jeff Searles, Eric Reed, Grayson Ashara, Ashley Bradley, and Laura Lewis. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Ben Quick to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly appreciate it. In this episode, we are talking about chapter 16 of The Gathering Storm. Yep, chapter 16 is in the White Tower. Yeah, a chapter in three parts. Yeah, there's different things (laughs) that go on. Yeah, this is a good one, though. I'm into it. I know a lot of people are like really waiting for this one just because it's the, I guess, the (laughs) Elida versus Egwene showdown we've been waiting for. it is. It's coming to a head. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get yeah, there. Yeah, we like like certainly that. will. It's the big part of the chapter. It is big. Okay. I'm excited for it. Overall, like you're happy with the way things so went? So happy. Okay. So good. Okay. I was so rooting for Egwene. Yeah. And she really did. Yeah. Held herself. Yeah. But we'll talk about it. Yes, yeah. we will. Okay. So I have a pretty good fun fact here because I got a little bit of inspiration from Origins about Elida. Of all people... Figured we might as well because we don't know what's going to happen going forward. Okay, and you're talking about the book by Michael Livingston? Yes, the What Origins. Okay, so I did a little bit of a dive too because there is some Irish mythology at play here. Mm. Now, with the Wheel of Time, we've already got tons of Irish mythology, like a whole bunch, so much, and we're going to do a little bit of overlapping here. Are but... you going to brutalize pronunciations again? Well, I would have to assume because it's mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. it's Irish. Yeah. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of the ancient Irish kingdoms is called Ulaid. Oh, you for sure said that wrong. Go U-L-A-I-D. On. You said it wrong. Go I ahead. don't know how else I would say it. Not like that. I'm also sure. known as Ulidia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's likely how Elida's name is derived. So as a side note, I also looked up a couple things. So Ulaid also refers to a group of people as Ireland was divided into five primary kingdoms. So there's Connaught, Leinster, Meath, Munster, and Ulster. And Ulaid was also known as the fifth of Ulster. Where have you heard the fifth before? Like, come on. Okay, that's pretty good. That has nothing to do with Elida. No, but it's just like little Irish things that are just interwoven into the story. I do like it. Anyways, not the point. That's a stretch. Go on. (laughs) One of the most famous stories of the Ulaid people is called, and I'm going to nail this pronunciation, Tain Bo Kuleng. And it's all, st- <laughs> oh geez, okay. It's also often referred to as the Irish Iliad, so I'm just going to go with that. Okay. And less commonly known as the Cattle Raid of Cooley, I can do that one, that's sure. English, where Connaught, which is one of the other five kingdoms, makes war on Ulster, or the Ulaid people, in order to steal a prized bull. So long story short, the bull gets taken, and Robert Jordan actually makes a direct reference to this, because when Rand is captured by the Aes Sedai, Elida is sent a message that says, the ring has been placed in the bull's nose. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyways, okay. her name comes from Ulaid or Ulidia, so there you go. Cool, that's right. interesting. Yes. All right, well, I'm excited to jump into this chapter, so let's just get started. Okay. Now, chapter 16 is called In the White Tower, and the chapter symbol is the Flame of Tarvalin. Makes sense. Fitting. Now, we are going to stay in an Egwene perspective for the entire chapter, but I'm here for it. Right. And like we said, three parts. Three parts. So this is like act one. Is that what it's called? It could be. Okay. Egwene has been using a nutcracker to shell nuts for the last hour or so. She is in a meeting (laughs) with three white sisters. Yes. One of them being a white sitter. Yes. Well, also... The literal head, head of the white of Aja. The white Aja. Yeah. Okay. So that's Ferrain. That's secret knowledge to Egwene, right? Technically. Yeah. There was the whole thing about like suspecting who's who, and she's like been trying to decipher like who are the heads of each Aja. Okay. But anyways. and what is the white head? Called? You tell me. <laughs> you tell uh, me. Don't look at your notes. Just go off memory. Head clerk. No, no, no. These are the logic people. Oh. Right. Who's the head clerk? The Browns. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The most logical of them all. The first reasoner. The first reasoner. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're right. (laughs) The first reasoner. 
reason or yeah no you guys that sounds so stupid <laughs> you're bad at naming things oh <laughs> uh, yeah oh and also i checked head clerk is the head of the gray aja grays okay yeah <laughs> sure okay anyways and the browns are the first researcher i don't know something dumb <laughs> something else stupid <laughs> the first chair sure yeah oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> none of it makes any Whatever. sense it, none of it yeah okay okay doesn't matter okay now so it's for rain yeah my my assy my assy yeah me assy me assy and to sam yes that's who's here yeah now, and i don't know anything about these other two i don't think yeah to sam we've got like nothing really i think we heard the name once before and then me she was one of the three white aja who was having that crazy discussion about the nature of reality and probably oh, ghosts. she was there too she was okay. like in that conversation sure. so okay. really really nothing okay now, so she's just sitting here basically thinking that this is a waste of her time and she's not even going to get to talk to anybody. Yeah. But then Egwene is asked, how would you have handled the situation? Yeah. And she's like, huh, what? Right. Say it again. I was looking at your vines. Well, also, she like <laughs> takes the opportunity to yeah. call Farain and them by their first names. First names. Right. Mm-hmm. And be like, mm, repeat yourself, please. Mm-hmm. Except no, please. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't use manners here. That would be deferring to people. Yeah. So they're all waiting for her answer. And Farain says, what would you have done in the Amarillin's place? You know that the dragon has been reborn and you know the tower must control him in order for the last battle to proceed. How would you have handled him? Yeah. I really like this too. For (laughs) instruction purposes, of course. And Egwene's like, this doesn't sound like instruction, but okay. Yeah, yeah. I also love it. It's like, why do we, why must the tower control the dragon? Must. 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 For the last battle to proceed? Like, what does that even mean? Why must, why must we? That doesn't, that doesn't follow. Because they're Aes Sedai, of course. I know, but I mean, they've reasoned this out. It's only logical. Yeah, (laughs) right? (laughs) Okay. Also, not a not an opportunity for like a bitch session about a lie about a lie to, just based on tone. She's going to give an actual good answer to the question. Yeah, but like hypothetical. Of, of course. Right. We're going to do hypothetical <laughs> first, and then they're going to be like, "No, you really, you, <laughs> you're you, you and then Rand's Rand. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah. But let's do the hypothetical first. Okay. Hypothetically, Egwene is going to send a group of sisters to the Dragon Reborn's home village to learn about what kind of man the Dragon Reborn is. Yeah. And then they're like, but you already know him. Why would you do that? Yeah. Well, first, it's yeah. also really funny, too, because they're like, ah, why would you send people to his home village to intimidate the family? Yeah. It's like, no. Yeah. No. Why is that the first thing <laughs> you're saying? No, to just talk to them. <laughs> just like get information. Ah, yeah. to also kidnap them. Yeah, kidnap the family and then yeah. uh, use like, them yeah. against him. Right. Yes. Okay. She's like, no, no. not that. <laughs> But then they're also like, okay, but you already know him. Yeah, so pretend you're you yeah. and then pretend Rand is Rand. What would you do yeah. now? <laughs> and she's like, all right, well, I do know Rand. At least I think I do. Yeah. And here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Well, she explains too, like, oh, he's rational, but he's stubborn, but he's a good man at heart. So, like, he's not a bad person, at least from what she knows. Yeah. So the plan is really going to be send sisters to offer guidance, and then if he refuses that, then send spies to see if he has changed from the guy he used to be. Right. And she's also traveled with him while he was going through a bunch of really hard stuff and saw him lose his temper and stuff like that, and she thinks that... All of that was probably already there. There was yeah. just nothing in the two rivers that made him that mad. Which makes which makes sense, right? Like you've never had to deal with this many yes. frustrating people at yeah. once. Yeah. Like the stress is different. Yeah. Okay. So these white sisters are a little skeptical and they're like, okay, so you're just going to wait and spy on him while he terrorizes everyone and everything? Yeah. Yep. Yes. And Egwene's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what we want him to do. Prophecy says burninate the countryside. Like, literally, yeah. that's what he has to do. Yeah. He's got to get Kalendor. <laughs> and he's also managed to restore order to Kyrian, unite Tyr and Ilion, and he's been received well in Andor. Plus, the plus, big... Plus, he's plus. gained the respect of the Aeel. Yeah. And then it's like, she also does like that little, little name drop oh, too. She's like, mm-hmm. I know that because I was there at the time that he did that. Yeah. And they're like. Well, no, that's because <laughs> one of them says, ah, yes, he has been able to subjugate the Aiel. Oh, yeah. It's like, no. And then she gets mad. Right. She gets defensive on behalf of the Aiel people. Yeah. She's like, uh, excuse me. She basically was one. No one <laughs> subjugates the Aiel. It's like. <laughs> he 
earned their respect, okay? You know the people who, like, go, speaking of Ireland, the yeah. people who, like, go to Ireland for, like, a summer and they come back with an Irish accent the and you're like, one. Mm-hmm. man, you, you were only there for, like, two months. Mm-hmm. Why? How did you get? Yeah. Some people <laughs> are just so susceptible. They're so good at accents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. I'm being a perfect arse. Yeah. <laughs> That's not Ireland, though. Yeah, no, it's not, but that's friends. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing, I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can you believe it? I've never had any professional dance <laughs> training. <laughs> right. So that's a Gwen. That's so funny. No, no, no. That's not a Gwen. <laughs> I don't think that's a Gwen. <laughs> I think that she's using that information to her benefit in this case because it's like, I actually have seen things that you haven't and yeah. I know things that you don't. I like, I, I agree with your interpretation, but I like mine better. Yeah, I li- okay. okay, that's fine. That's right. fair. But anyway, Ferrain tells her it sounds like she would just let Rand do whatever he wants. And Egwene's like, well, like kind of yeah. with guidance. Yeah. He's like a big old Russian river and... We can't just force him to go where we want. Otherwise, right. that's bad news. Well, it's kind of funny because that's literally what the Moraine's advice at the very end was. Yeah. But she she literally used the river metaphor. It's like you can't, you have to, just like Sidar, you got to you, you gotta oh, trust the river. Oh, Egwene loves her metaphors in this yeah. chapter. She says like three separate ones in like one paragraph. Th- that's because they're good metaphors. Meta- good, good metaphors. Yeah. But anyways, we really got to yeah. get ahead in this because then they're like, okay, so you do your spying, you do your investigation, then what? Like, what's the actual plan? After you get all the information, right. what do what do you do? Okay, what but do you first do? I want to talk about how Egwene thinks that what Elida did to him was a bad idea because she acted without information, which is pure Looney Tunes. Right. Yeah, White Tower got Just what it deserves. Crazy. Yeah. Except I love the word lunacy. Lunacy. Yeah. I love it. I love when it's written somewhere. It's just so funny. It's been I, a lot of places lately. It's like my favorite word lately. Lunacy. It just keeps popping up. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, pure lunacy. Gotta work that into like uh professional emails. I know. Yes. No, that feels offensive. Some... <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna piss some people off if I'm like, this is lunacy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no. All right. Okay. So let's get to a good, uh, like the actual plan. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Egwene finally says that Rand sees himself as an emperor, so she would send a delegation to honor him. Only a group of like three I said I. Right, and strategic. Strategically, a gray, a green, and a blue. Yeah. Blue because it's a favorable view. We got the Moraine relationship. Yeah, past she out- associations. Yeah, she says. it doesn't say outright Moraine, but like yeah. that's the reason. Yeah. Green because they're like opposite of red. Yeah. And then gray because gray negotiations, means negotiations, not, not war. Yeah, not fighting you. So that's yeah. a big thing. Yeah. And the whites are like, hmm, good logic, except there have been delegations and they didn't work. Yeah. But it's and like, Egwene's like <laughs> uh, well, no, they were fundamentally flawed because they were sent by a red. Yeah, well, like, the yeah. uh, the one from the tower was fundamentally flawed for sure, because that was literally, like, a kidnapping plot. It wasn't supposed to be a negotiation. Right. It wasn't supposed to be, like, like hey, we're here to help out. Yep. And then the rebel one is already off on a bad foot because the tower's broken. Yeah. And they also didn't go in very well. No. Like, it's not... They that did a bad job. Yeah. Ha- however... Yeah. I find it interesting that nobody in the tower yet has any idea that the Dragon Reborn does have an Aes Sedai advisor. Right. And it's Cad Swain. Right. Who is literally treating him like this big old rushing river and is advising him and guiding him. Yeah. And. Well, this is what happens when your heads are so far up your butts. Like they have no clue. You can't see what's happening in the world. no idea. Yeah. Yep. It's like, hey, you know that super famous one? (laughs) That's the one. That's the one. (laughs) That's the one. And you have no idea. Your spies all suck. Nobody has given you any information about anything. Yeah. They got they gotta clean up their own house here, you know? Clearly. Gotta do it. Well, that's the metaphor part. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's one of the metaphors. Right, okay. But we'll get to it because Egwene just can't understand why the Aes Sedai would raise a red to Amerlin in the days of the Dragon Reborn. Yeah. And they're like, uh, some would say reds are the best at dealing with men who can channel. But like dealing with, like, and that's, and that's a... what Egwene's point is. Yeah, she does. She says like dealing with and working with are very different things. Yeah. And the way reds have dealt with men who can channel, it's just, that's not... They just They just gentle, gentle them. them. And it's like, that's not gonna... Or both. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. Fundamentally flawed. Yes. Makes sense. 
And then Egwene goes on this huge spiel about how it was just a terrible idea to kidnap the dragon. And then she's like, since when do I said I go around kidnapping kings? Yeah, it's like, and I was like, always. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure. I told you, it's you in the playbook. That, it's like chapter three. <laughs> and Egwene has literally met yeah. Matt and Stepaneos. Who was kidnapped. Who was a kidnapped uh-huh. king. Although not shoved in a box and tortured. He was rolled up in a carpet, I'm pretty sure. I'm sh- Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, no box though. <laughs> no, it was a carpet. Yeah. It was very clear. <laughs> yeah, but Egwene is like, no, no, no. We're supposed to be subtly pulling strings and manipulating. Yeah, I mean, she also has a point on that too. Not locking kings in boxes and torturing them. Yeah, yeah. and like we do have, like I can, like, I can why say. why does Rand want to work with us if we're just treating him For like sure. a freaking prisoner. Yes. No, absolutely. Yeah. And she does make a good point. Like I said, I are supposed to manipulate the world. And they do in a lot of ways. They they have done in the past a decent yeah, job. Yeah, mostly their rule at this point, though, is through fear. Yeah. 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 Probably fear of being kidnapped. And like the legendary <laughs> status of like, ooh, we never yeah, really yeah. know what's happening right. until everything kind of gets on display here. So yeah. Anyways, okay. Yep. All right. Well, Egwene says that Rand is a good person at heart, but he does need guidance. And even if they see him as an unruly child, they can't let him know that. Yeah, don't that's treat him like that. Super don't... disrespectful, and he's never yeah. going to be like, okay, exactly. with that. Yeah, makes sense. It took Maureen a long time to realize that. It did. Because she did treat him like an unruly child. Just because he's been an unruly child. I know, but I what understand Egwene's why he is, is. You can't let him know that. Yeah. And she figured it out. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But Rand also has the issue where he's so stubborn that his stubbornness becomes an easy way to manipulate him. Yeah. Right? He's like, that. Reverse I'm gonna, psychology. going to do the shit. opposite of what you tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. It's not that great all the time. No. Anyways. Now, it's going to be incredibly difficult to gain his trust back because of all the tower's missteps. Yep. Because Rand has taken Aes Sedai captive and allowed them to be bonded by Ashaman. Yeah, she's like sprinkling the seeds right mm-hmm. now too. Because and apparently Brain this is was like, uh, yeah. I don't really know. That's just not really <laughs> confirmed. It's just rumors. And the other two are like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and Freen, like, for sure, probably, like, knows that this is, like, actually what's happened. Yes. But this is Egwene, like, it's actually really good that Egwene is constantly seen having information yes. that the most of the other sisters don't, don't have access have. to. But, yeah. like, the higher and ups she's do. she's sharing it. She's pretty transparent as a... In, like, the way that I said I don't want you to be transparent. I know. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> I like, know, but I like it. It's a power move. Yeah. And so this is when Egwene pivots and she's like, okay, but Rand isn't the issue right now. We've got bigger things to deal with. And the ice are like, what are you talking about? What What's be more important than bigger? him? It's like, okay, hey. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing. Yeah. Do you want to be a farmer with a wagon who's concerned that there's nothing to sell? Oh, yeah. This is one of the metaphors. Even though the axle's broken. Yeah. How are you going to get your goods to market? You could have a full cart, but you can't even get there. Yeah. You got all the broccoli you want, but you know none what of that else? broccoli is going to get sold. Can't build a building on a cracked foundation. Right. Also that. Heard that. We heard that already. Yeah. Right. That's good. That that one works. We should keep reusing like, that. And they're like, ah. Yes. You're talking about the division in the tower. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that one. <laughs> and then Frayn is like, your logic is flawed. Why are you still insisting you're the Emerald Seat if you want to correct the yeah. division in the tower? Yeah. Well, and then uh, <laughs> Gwen's like, okay, so let's assume that I renounce my claim. And then the, I get the rebels to rejoin the tower. Like, is everything going to be good? Yeah, under a light. Is like, good? We're good? We're good? We're good? Everything's good here? And they're like, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's all good then. It's like, no. No. Not all good. No. Nope. Very bad, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> Still bad. Yeah, because then Egwene tells them that it's important for the Ajas to be seen working together. Yeah. We have to start to heal the cracks. Yeah, and I like this from the whites. I think it's so funny because they're like, well, it's not on us. Yeah, we didn't start we this. We didn't do this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like literally what every Aja every is doing. Every single one. We didn't start it. Well, yeah. And Egwene's like, well, the present leadership did. Yeah. And also, as a side note, she doesn't directly say it, but she hints the fact that LVR and they're like, hey, she was white. That was your guy. And she's like right up with her with the Ammerland. So like, this is also kind of on you. It's on you. Yeah. It's on everybody. Yeah. But it's like also on you. And she's like, you know what? It's going to have to be you guys anyway. You're going to have to be seen rebuilding relationships between the Ajas. Yeah. You got to reach out 
and do it. And they're like, no, you should get the grays in on this. <laughs> Go talk to them. I'm and then trying. It goes on a whole rant. You know, I've already freaking tried. Yeah. Those greens, they suck. The gr- so this is actually an interesting like breakdown. Yeah. So we've got five potential ajas because the reds are out. Yeah. The blues are out. Yeah. These ones are the whites. Yep. The grays are kind of being buttheads. The greens are being especial, uh, like especially a spe- buttheads. Yeah. And Egwene is kind of like irked by that because she's like, oh, they should let me in. Because she wants, I to, wants to be she wants to be yeah. green. Yeah, I want, I want, I to, want be to be green. green. <laughs> but they're like, no. And the greens are the only ones who aren't like, hey, Egwene, you should come be green. Yeah, because the we, she got it for like, the whites are like, you yeah. should be white. The grays are like, oh, I don't know about the grays. Not the grays. The yellows are like, you should be yellow. The yep. browns are like, you should be brown. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, there's not a lot of wiggle room here. No, but the yellows are being reasonable and want to heal the tower, but they like don't have that much power. Yeah. And the, the browns, browns are like on their own little are, like... <laughs> <laughs> interested in it more than they're interested in actually yeah fixing it they're interested in like the history and the learning yeah. of it and like the book side well and Egwene is like okay so i have them researching this topic hoping that they come across this other story about something that happened that helps them see what should happen exactly but at this point it's all on you guys yeah do you see the logic right and then the i said i just kind of sit there in shock yeah because they're like Oh, you're doing a lot of work here. You are doing. She things. revealed a lot in yeah. this. Yeah, like, she's like, "Oops, did I miss that?" But nah. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, like in hindsight, for sure, it seems like a good play. But she reveals so much information, just showing that she is literally getting around to every single Aja to worm her way in. So if they were like, "We don't like Egwene doing this," that could be bad for her. In itself, I guess so. Yeah, I think it's more impressive. Than anything. It is. Yeah. But if they had like an, like if they were, I don't know, like the greens or the grays where they're really not very receptive at all, it could be worse. Well, she probably would have, wouldn't have opened up. Exactly. To this point. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, that's when Egwene is like, what am I supposed to do? Just sit around like most people and do nothing while the tower falls apart. And she's like, I'm using this novice dress to my advantage to get around and ask the questions and yeah. have the conversations that need to be had. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when Ferain does the same thing that the, all the other Ajas that we have seen. They're like, okay, so like hy- hypothetical if we want to help, like what would you do? What what's the mm-hmm. what's what the action would plan? You do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have this friend. Yeah. Who wants to help? Yeah, she doesn't how know would how she to. Help? Yeah. yeah, not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay, easy. Go have meals together. Do the thing. That's like the first step. That's the first step, and then Egwene gets dismissed and decides to do a little bit of a respectful head nod yeah that's big Farine. because Egwene doesn't do nope the head nod she also gets one back she does yeah she and does and then Farine tells her if she chooses the way Aja, she would be very welcome all right and honestly at this point i do think the white Aja is a good choice for Egwene. really yeah why i think that this entire plan of hers is incredibly logical. Yeah. It's incredibly well thought out. And if that's the only literal thing we go on with the <laughs> white Aja is being a logical person. Well, no, they're like the philosophers, the thinkers. Yeah, I would right? say that that's what... Yeah. Like, I think Egwene is well, really good yeah. at this piece I mean, ar- arguably, I could even say, like, the whites are like the scientists, right? Sure. In, in some senses, because it's like the, sure. the I, I could understand why Egwene wouldn't want to do it. But she fits the mold pretty well. Isn't that the point? Think, that she fits the mold I of a bunch of them? she fits it better than the greens. Okay. Although she does know how to blow stuff up and fight. That's true. <laughs> That's okay. the only thing the greens should be doing and none of them mm, are doing it. I want to check fa- fact check you there because I'm pretty sure the greens don't do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't even do that. Battle commander. Right. Captain general. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Not that then. Right. Okay. Nah. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so that feels like the end of the first act. Yeah, it does. Or scene. I wish yeah. I knew the difference between acts and scenes. Yeah, I think it's the same. Mm-hmm. It's I've not. Basing it on, I'm, yeah. No, <laughs> no. I think the act is the section, and sure. then there are scenes within the act. Okay, so this is scene two, because we're leaving. Same character. Yeah. Right? Is the whole chapter This is not the time for this conversation. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, we're done with this section. And she's going to leave. She gets dismissed pretty quick and then she leaves. Yeah. And then she's happy about it because she's smiling. Yeah. Up until. She's feeling good. That was a great. Scene two. That was great. I think that we should take a quick break. Yeah. And then come back for the. Second scene. Next 
section. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we're back and we're going to get into the next part. Right. So we have Egwene leaving the meeting with a smile on her face until she sees Katerina. Katerine? Yep. Katerina. Whatever. Yep. And she's here, who's not one of her normal people who should be here right now. Yeah. And so she's like, okay, kind of weird. But she's here with more fork root. Yes. And then we get a note that Katarina has been tending to Elida since Tarna has been gone on a mysterious mission. Yeah, so we know where Tarna went. Is that to the Black Tower? Yeah. She went there? Yes. With like Pavara, right? Yeah. And a couple others? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. Good for them. Yeah. Except not, probably, so... Oh, yeah, probably not. If we get any update on that anytime soon, I'll not like it, but then also (laughs) be grateful for the update. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so Egwene drinks the fork root and starts heading towards her next lesson, but then Katarina is super smug and is like, where do you think you're going? So smug. Like, let her walk a little bit away, too. Yeah, you won't have any more lessons. It's actually been decided that you need to learn humility. Right. And the Amerlin has heard of your refusal to curtsy to sisters. Right. So your new form of punishment is going to be lots of chores and lots of work. Chores, yeah. So much so that you'll have no time for meetings. Right. You've already mastered all the weaves. Yeah. Right? We don't need to do that. Yeah. But it's actually kind of crazy because when you get the breakdown, it's five hours at each of the three things. So five hours in the morning for groundskeeping and then- Gardens, yeah. Yeah, gardens. And then every afternoon, five hours in the kitchens. And then every evening, five hours scrubbing Scrubbing floors. floors. So 15 hours a day is like manual labor. Yeah. Like that is a- that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So from now on, all you'll do is chores. Always. Yeah. Until you give up your foolish pride and learn to curtsy to your betters. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually a pretty interesting like change in punishment because this actually makes Egwene freak out in this chapter. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Not because like the manual labor. She's like, I'm, I can do late. Like, I'm fine with that. It's yeah. literally getting shut away. It's at, almost as bad as being locked away in a cell. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's what she doesn't want because yeah, like, it's no not more meetings, the actual no more... work yeah. that she's annoyed about. It's no more freedom, no yeah. more meetings, no more getting to meet with people who, you know. Yeah. So Sow the it's... seed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like her entire work inside the tower. It's yes, not exactly. It's not good. So Egwene's mind starts racing because this is a disaster. And Katarina's is like, ah, so you understand. No more visiting sisters and wasting their time. What do you think of that? Mm-hmm, mm, but don't, yeah. don't let her know. Egwene gets her thoughts under control because she does not want to let Katarina know how bad of a situation this is for her. Yeah. And so, yeah, she does not want to let on how effective this punishment really is. She does spiral, though. Like, in her head, it's... So she goes, all right, let's go. Yeah. And they go off walking. But she really does wonder how she's going to get out of this one. Yeah. And we're talking, like, within the first couple hours, like, she spirals pretty fast. She's like, well... Maybe if I just give in and curse to Elida, yeah. then I get out of doing this and I get back to doing what I want, but then no. It's going to be one more thing, one losing. more thing. Yeah. And they're going to keep demanding one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Well, and showing that she's broken. Yeah. And then this won't be the end of it because then every time they're annoyed that she's doing something they don't like, yeah. they're going to know that this punishment works. It's like, oh, you're not using proper titles. Oh, you're not, you exactly, know. Exactly. All of that. All yeah, that stuff. Everything. So- now we're going to get a bit of a time lapse and we learn that Egwene has been working in the kitchen for about three hours. She's scrubbing out one of the big gigantic oven fireplaces. <laughs> we get a lot of descriptions. Oh my gosh. Like so much description of this it's oven wild. It's and wild. how to clean it and getting the stuff you know, off of I it. I feel like Brandon Sander- Sanderson was channeling his inner Robert Jordan. Yeah. He was like, this is what the fans want, right? Exactly. This is what people like reading about. You want to, you want to learn how big fireplaces is working. I'm going to tell you all Here we go. about it. I'm going to tell you everything. Everything I know and researched about this. And research. Yes. And then some. Nobody just also knows this. Also stuff we made up about Elida. Oh, not Elida. Egwene wearing yeah. a dress that other novices have worn yeah. to clean out this oven. Right, because you're going to get so sooty. So dirty. And yeah. she's wearing a mask. Right. And this was written long before COVID. Yeah. 
And he nails what it feels like to be wearing a mask and be breathing. Oh, goodness. He does a good job. Yeah. Oh, man. That's good. Okay. Anyway, okay. Where are we? Yeah. Uh, Gwen is cleaning the kitchen yes, oven Yes, absolutely. Thing. That's where we still are. Right. Yeah. No, we have, okay. to, be, we have to be there for what a little bit. What I do bit. want to talk about, though, is during this, we learn that her fork root this time was considerably stronger than normal. To the point where she can't channel at all, and yeah. she's actually a little bit, like, woozy. Yeah. Like, maybe they stepped up the dose? I don't know. Yeah, for sure. But, like, why? Like, is there, like, a... No, because if Katarina's a bitch. Well, yes, yes, but also, with the manual labor, there was the thought of, like, oh, we don't want her channeling to do any of this mm. work, too. And Gwen thinks about that, like, oh, I wouldn't either because people could feel it, right? But there's that aspect of, like, yeah. don't channel to do your chores, I don't know. It just maybe, or yeah. maybe they already knew about the plan to go serve Elida later today. Oh yeah, probably. And they wanted her to be extra subdued. Probably that maybe? makes sense too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm good with that too. I feel like Katarina is just a bitch. <laughs> you know that works. She just upped it. You know. <laughs> we don't even need just to for for fucking funsies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. In also last thought process that she has, because there's like a lot of thoughts. Yeah. And she's like, she needs a plan. Yeah. Yeah. She needs a plan because the last battle is coming and the Amberlin seed is scrubbing floors and fireplaces. Like, come on. Uh Uh-huh. She's right. Yeah. We don't want to pass the last battle by. And she doesn't want anyone forgetting about her. I get it. Yeah. Now, while she's scrubbing, she catches some movement out of the corner of her eye. Yeah. Did this like, did this scene catch your like attention? Because Laris is being sneaky at first and Egwene's like... Why? She notices yeah. it, and then she, like, whips around to catch the person doing yeah, it. Yeah, and it's Laris. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, oh, that's weird. It's yeah. just Laris. Like, she's just checking in on me. But wait, she's... Being weird. <laughs> she's, she's also... moving silently and raising be... her finger to her lips. And... and she's also, like, bigger. Yeah. But moving silently. And Robert Jordan would do this thing with big characters who move light on their feet. Like uh-huh. Van. Like Vanit, right? Okay. Like with Matt, and so Laris is kind of doing the same thing. It's her, like, oh, these bigger people can't, <laughs> like, un- yeah, they can it's move light on their feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the word. That's the yeah. word. So, and then it just kind of catches a Gwen off. So it's kind of funny. Well, and I, th- I don't know if it's the that like stereotypical trope. Yeah. I think that it's more because later when they're coming back from where they were, Laris is like bumps into the counter. And it's all an act and knock something, <laughs> you know, down. Yeah. Yeah. Like she does. And so Egwene knows her as a louder moving person mm-hmm. so in she, the kitchen. She wants to be sneaky. She yeah. can be sneaky. So then that's, I think that's what catches her off guard more than what you're alluding to a little bit. That's just my. Yeah, no, name. for sure. Yeah. So anyways, she's being super sneaky and is like motioning for Egwene to follow her. So Egwene is like, okay. So. <laughs> she follows her into like a back pantry. Yeah. <laughs> where Laris shoves some sacks out of the way and lifts up a floorboard to reveal a trap door. Right. Ooh. Ooh, into a person sized hole in the ground. Oh my gosh. And is like, Egwene, get in. Get in. <laughs> get in the ID hole. He's like, what's going <laughs> on here? Like, what? Yeah. So then Laris gives the instructions like, okay, wait here until nighttime. I can sneak you out right now. Like, I can't do it now, but the garbage goes oh, out yeah. later. And here's the thing about the garbage. It just goes into the streets. Yeah. It just goes <laughs> so, out into the streets. Yeah, I'll hide you with the girls who take the garbage out. And then I'll have a friend of a friend who can get you onto a boat and across the river. But hey, don't go just, back to those I'd idiots. I advise against yeah. <laughs> going back to those fools who made you a puppet. Yeah. Go find somewhere to lay low until this all blows over. And then come back and beg. Yeah. And and Whoever's in who, charge, see if they can take you back take in. Take you in, and it probably won't be Elida. The way things are going, yeah. Like there's a lot that's packed into this like yes. little speech here. Yeah. So this is a big reminder time. Laris is the one who helped Min when she was in the tower in disguise yeah. as Elmendreda. But I really thought that that was just like a fondness for Elmendreda. Yeah. Because she felt bad for this woman who can't channel in the tower. Yeah. Right? Well, it's that too, but it's also just like character of Lars who likes to help young girls. Yes, yeah. Like, that's a big thing. And then she also helped Min free Swan and Liana to escape. So this is like clearly not the first time that she's done this. And I also have to say that we also learned from the kin that they have people, like contacts inside Tarvalin, that help select runaways. 
Yeah. And it's one of those things like Lars seems like a really good candidate for someone who might help facilitate the runaways from the tower with her sneaky hidey holes to smuggle people out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Gwen is so <laughs> caught off guard here. She like doesn't even know what to say. Yeah, she, like, she can't even find why. Her. She's like, <laughs> "What is going?" And she's thinking like, "When was this built? Why does this exist? Lars why is she so for good at sure this? Has done this a thousand times." Yeah, she's yeah. so confident in sneaking her away. She's like, "Oh yeah, I've timed it perfectly because they just checked on you, and yeah. they're not going to be checking back for another half, half an hour, hour, so it's fine." It's like, "Let's yeah. go." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except she's wrong. She is wrong, but, but only because, yeah, like, only a, because, yeah. but, oh, close. Yeah, but then Lars is like, okay, in you go. <laughs> yeah, and then what are you thinking about the whole, the way things are going, Elida won't be in charge. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's just because, like, sounds Lars. great. That almost sounds, like, promising for Yeah, Elaine. yeah, but it's also, like, is this just, like, Lars hoping, or the, is this her having her ear to the ground and, like, hearing rumors about I said I scheming? It's, it's Lars having her ear to the ground okay. she knows she knows the goings on mm, yep. oh yes she does people people talk to their servers oh yes and they their do cooks and oh their, yeah you know or no 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 they don't talk to them they talk around they them. talk around mm-hmm, them right yeah like they're not even there like they're not people because exactly. that's what the Aes Sedai do yes <laughs> exactly that's exactly it so she has a lot of information right yeah that's that's that is promising okay yeah but yeah eventually Egwene is just like, no, I'm not getting, like, why? Yeah. What's happening? Why are you doing this? <laughs> I love Lars too, because she's like, like, well, in you go. We don't have time. Get in. Get in yeah. the hole. It's like, no. Yeah. And no. Lars is like, you know what? I won't be part of breaking a girl's spirit. Sure, some of the stuff that the Aes Sedai are doing are shameful, but working you as hard as you can is the worst punishment. And Well, and she's like, oh, I've heard about all this stuff. And like, I'm not going to just try and break you because like, we're not punishing anymore. We're not trying to build character. We're just trying to break the will. Right. And Lars is like, I'm not going to help with that. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I respect that. I like yeah. Lars for that. So now finally, Egwene is like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Can't. Someone has to fight Elida. And every day that I refuse to bend, it's a victory. And it's more than I can do from the outside. So. Yeah. Even if no. even if the only person who knows that is Elida. Yeah. Like, that's kind of Egwene's mentality right now. Yeah. And so she turns back to get back to work, and Laris closes her hidey hole. Yeah. But Good. then this is when, on the way back, she, like, moves louder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Egwene and Laris both get caught by surprise, because back in the kitchen, Katerina is there. Yeah, she pops up. She's like, boo. Mm-hmm. And the, for a second, they think they caught, but Egwene is just so quick on her feet. She is. She's like, ah, yes, I see what I was doing wrong, gesturing <laughs> to like another fireplace that's like near the pantry where they right. were. Right. Yeah, good cover. Mm-hmm. And Lars is like, I don't know, something about a real punishment. Yeah, good. Glad you learned your lesson yeah. or something. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and so Egwene starts hurrying back to the fireplace, but Katerina's like, I don't think so. The Amberlin has demanded that the novice attends her at dinner tonight. Right. So here we go. And Katerina says, I don't know. I told Elida that I doubt that one day of work yeah, it's been is like, going to It's been like four you, hours. <laughs> but uh, she wants you there. So you better go get cleaned up. Right. Because you can't go to Elida looking like this. And also take this opportunity to like basically be humili- Show your humility. I'm humilitated. Humilitated. <laughs> yeah, like, take this as your first chance. Like, do, do the things, and then get out of this work. Yeah. Like, just do it. But we know Katarina sucks, so. Oh, yeah, well, she's Black Aja. I know that. And she's red, which is Ugh. debatably worse. Ugh, bad things. Right. Yeah. Except she's really pretty, right? Galena I don't know, thinks maybe. she's really pretty. I think she's the one who Galena, like, like really liked. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Anyway, Egwene has a chance here to go get cleaned up. She takes a bath for, like, an hour. Yeah. It takes that long to get the suit off. Suit. Suit. <laughs> I love that just word. Soot. I like. I like it. It's suit. just. Soot. It's S O O T though. Yeah, but so is suit. foot. Oh, weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, okay. It's soot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we're not going to talk about uh, her cleaning up. She doesn't really do that much thinking. Like nope. she does some thinking about like her situation, no. but not a ton. And she doesn't really game she's plan like, it. She's hmm, like, how should I act tonight? I guess I'll play it by ear. Like, yeah, but then really on the way on the way she game plans it, and I guess that's what we should really talk about because like she gets ready and then she's ready, <laughs> then she goes. Yeah, and on the walk is like, okay, what I'm gonna do? Because I'm just gonna stay silent, just well, like last okay. time. Hold on. <laughs> 
hold on, because with Egwene's like mentality of how she's gonna handle things, she's like, ah, yes, I'm gonna stay silent last like last time. But I'm thinking, okay, so you strategizing, like you don't follow through on your no, strategies. No, she never does. She's gonna be as good at the stay silent strategy as as like the don't spill soup strategy from last time. Like it's just <laughs> she doesn't. Well, You're no, fooling but, yourself. But it's okay because she goes in with one plan, but she's also flexible. She's like, I'll read the situation. To stop her from talking last time, though, she chose to spill the soup because she was like, I can't stay silent. Yeah. So why would you go? That's like you. She's like, this time I can. I'm just. This time I can because I'm stronger <laughs> than Elida. I'm better than Elida. I can do it this time. I know. I know. Well, and this time she knows what to expect. Whereas last time she wasn't even really sure what to expect. I guess so. Because it's the unknown that makes things harder. She's really just kidding herself. I kind of imagine it like if you were like, oh, yes, I won't share my opinion about things. Like that's never going to happen. You know what? I do do that at work. I don't believe you. I know. I work really hard sometimes. (laughs) You're like, I'm going to share a little bit of my opinion. I know. (laughs) Just a little bit. Just like a little bit. Or like... I, I didn't share my whole opinion. I was, in a, I was in a staff meeting and somebody said something and I didn't say anything. But, but your then face gives my it away. My principal was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed like, from what? across I the didn't room say anything. that your face is saying that you hate this. <laughs> and then I told the restaurant story. Yeah. And how people in restaurants know when I don't like my food or my yeah. drinks. And, and they twice come in like a very short amount of time. Yeah. The servers came over and I think They're once, but like, be- I, I noticed, noticed from across the restaurant like that drink. you didn't notice your drink. <laughs> it's like, oh. oh man. Yeah. They're very expressive. Yeah. And sometimes I'm able to mostly do a good job keeping okay. my mouth shut. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Yep. Egwene needs to come up with better game plans that you are know, realistic. I'm fine with her game plan. Smart it feels, goals. You know, I... Uh, oh, yeah. Smart goals. Ugh. Okay. But I just... I approve of her game plan. Okay. But then, you know, <laughs> things change all yeah. the time. So it's fine. Now, Egwene gets to Elida's room and goes inside. But here's the thing. Caught off guard again. Yeah. Caught off guard once again by who's in here. For the record, this is moving into Act 3 here. This is this moving is the into third, third yeah. section. First yes. we had the teaching, then, then we had the, the kitchen, kitchen thing, and now we have the and lighting. And now we have the dinner. Right. Yes. Okay, but yeah, Egwene is thrown off by what's going on in here, because this is a dinner of all sitters from different ajas. Yes, and she figured it might just be like a dinner with a Lido or maybe a Lido and Maidani again. Yeah. This one's throwing her off. Yep. So inside we have. Yeah, here Nikiri, we go. Kiri, mm-hmm. who's a gray and a black aja hunter. Right. Doestine, who's a yellow and a black aja hunter. Okay. And then we have Ferrain, a white who was just in a meeting with yeah. Egwene this afternoon, who didn't even mention that she was having dinner with Elida. Yes, but, but it's like she doesn't for... have to tell you what she's doing for dinner. No, but here's the thing. Frayne seems surprised that Egwene is here. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't seem like she was aware that Egwene would be at this no. meeting. No, no, no. And no maybe one was if aware. she maybe yeah. if she did, then she might have mentioned something. Maybe. But Yeah. And then we have Rubinda, who's a green and Shivan, who's a brown. Yeah, Egwene has been wanting to meet her. Yeah, and Shivan has been a part of the negotiating with the rebels. Yeah, all right, good summary. Okay, so now Egwene can tell it's a bit tense in here, but gets a little bit of a nod from Doacine, kind of like a, huh? Look uh, at me, <laughs> look at me having dinner with other Ajas, like you I don't want to be here either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. Also, for the record, there's no reds here, and Egwene thinks, oh, Elida probably didn't invite any reds because she considers herself still from the red, so it's Even equal. Even though she should not. And Egwene's right about that. Yep. Like, Elida really shouldn't. I know, but Egwene gets self-righteous about these kind of things. Oh, all the time, yeah. 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 Even with her whole, like, ooh, the Amaralyn is from Noaja. Yeah. But it's like, technically, they all... And then all... she's, like, still pissed at the greens. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. you take... Okay. You're supposed to come from one, and yeah, you're supposed to be of them all, and I yeah. get that, but yeah. also, like... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, it's Egwene. (laughs) It's all, yeah, it's all whatever. Now, for one split second, Egwene thinks that maybe Elida has called this dinner an attempt to heal the rifts in the White Tower. Yeah, she thinks that way too long, in my opinion. It's like, that shouldn't even cross your mind. Yeah. Like, obviously, no. no. (laughs) And it's immediately like, oh, wait, no. Yeah, right, not that. This is clearly just to insult and intimidate everybody, and then also show off Egwene. Yeah. 
as a docile puppet. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. power move. Because or whatever, not puppet, but you know. Well, yeah, no, like she's been cowed because Elida has been saying that about Egwene the entire time, and Egwene has been being like, "Oh, I'm not." So then she has the internal struggle of like, "Okay, well, what do I do? Because if I just serve and stay silent, am I showing myself to be cowed in front of all these sitters that I've been like working so hard?" Yeah, and Shivan, like, she hasn't talked to, but she's wanted to get in front of. Yeah. And so it's so like, what do you do now? Mm-hmm. And Egwene's job tonight is to just refill Elida's wine. The whole night. night. Yeah, that's it. And there is a moment. This actually, her internal no monologue <laughs> goes on for so long. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they're servers. Because these are all sitters. It's not a Gwen serving She's the not meal. being entrusted with the soup again. No, she is not. <laughs> no, there's like real staff for that. Yeah. But a Gwen thinks, okay, I can refill wine. That's fine. Because even the whites today, I sat cracking nets for them yeah. for like an hour. That's okay. I can be instructed to do stuff like this and I can just listen. That's right. okay. The problem comes when there's an explicit question yeah. that's asked of Egwene when her plan is just to stay silent. Can you just like, can you actually just do that? Yeah. And does she want to now? Yeah. Because she probably could have just stayed silent. She had the resolve. She decided that's her plan. She might have been able to, but now the circumstances have changed. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So Elida starts asking questions to the Aes Sedai around the table and she asks Shivan the Brown about foolish talks with the rebels. Yeah, because she's working on the negotiations. That's right. And she thinks they're stupid and pointless yeah. and insults all the greys. Yes. The she's entire... like, you know how the greys are. It's yeah, like... <laughs> I know. Now, okay, there's a weird part for me okay. in the book. And it's just the wording of the one sentence okay. that I need to ask you about like is it just me okay so (laughs) hold on i don't even know what you're talking about i know let me grab my book hold on okay okay so when we're learning who's here it says in the book all of the people listed and then it says rubinda of the green aja sat beside shivan of the brown a sister whom Egwene had been waiting to meet blah 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 okay okay thanks for letting me know who's here and who everybody is because rubinda like i don't know that name Yeah. Off the top of my head for sure, if I've heard it or not, I don't know. But thanks for telling me of the Green Aja, sat beside Shabana the Brown. Also don't know who that is. So cool. Good information, right? Yeah. Now, on the next page, there's a paragraph while Elida's insulting the Greys. Yeah. And then it says... Shivan turned away, seeming more disturbed than before. Why did Elida invite them to dinner if only to insult them and their Ajas? As Egwene watched, the Red turned her attention to Ferain and complained to her about Rubinda, a sitter from the Green Aja who also resisted Elida's efforts to end the talks. Yeah. And it, the phrasing of it was just so weird because I was like, is Rubinda here? Oh, yeah, it should be the sitter for, well, yeah, it is phrased like, a little bit weird. Because, and I even went back to the other paragraph yeah. and was like, yeah, Rubinda of the Green Aja sat beside Shivan. And yeah. then over here, talk to Ferain about Rubinda, a sitter from the Green Aja. Like the. The important part is that Rubinda is also resisting the efforts to end the talks. I under, yeah, now I get but that. But yeah, I, I agree. It's very kind of weird. Written, I was like, is she here or is she not here? Yeah. The way it's written threw me so off. It's about as weird as it is shit talking a person in front of them to another person. Well, and that's what I was thinking <laughs> she's too. She's like, she's right, she's right she's there. She's literally she's right there. Yeah. 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 So that's why I was like, yeah, Elida am is I misunderstanding a huge this? Asshole. Because I was, I, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> but I was like, why did she need to be named Green in the description when I learned on the last page that right. she is? Right. The way it's described is like that I haven't heard of her before. Yeah. But she's here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I agree. Phrase yeah. kind of weird, but yeah, that's the one. <laughs> okay. And <then> so, she's here. <laughs> anyway, Elida's a bitch. Yeah. And. <laughs> Egwene doesn't really understand she what's happening She puts the dick here. in dictator. <laughs> oh, good one. Yes, yeah. she certainly does do that. Thank you. Okay, but now is when Egwene starts to kind of put the puzzle pieces together and is understanding the point of this dinner. Yeah, It bullying wasn't and power. to bring yeah. us all together. It was just to display bullying and power. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay, and then this is when the conversation shifts to the Sean Chen. Yeah, this is where it heats up. <laughs> oh, man. Because somebody brings it up. Someone mentions it. Yeah. Should we talk about that? And Elida's like, 
the Shanchen. We don't even need to worry about them. Right. I but love the responses too. <laughs> Shivana's like, um, no, actually, we do have to pay attention to what they're doing. Yeah. I've had some sisters ask this novice yeah, about her Wayne. experiences with them. <laughs> It's horrifying. And you should hear what they do to Aes Sedai. Yeah. It's like, this is is horrifying information. (laughs) And Aladdin's like, oh, Egwene, this chick, she's a liar. And? And exaggerates everything. Yeah. And also. (laughs) Also, slight change between the audiobook and the written book. Oh, really? Yeah. In the book, it says, surely you know how the child is prone to exaggerate. And in the audiobook, it says... Surely you know how the child is prone to exaggeration. Ooh. Yeah. Good catch. That's Thanks. a tiny catch. Yeah. Okay. It is tiny. Right. And I think it's a misread. Oh, yeah. I that... don't think it's like any sort of book change or anything like that, but. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah. that's that's an easy one. <laughs> All right. But then it gets better because oh, yeah. she says, like, a lie. Oh, like, the oh, Shanchen are working for Rand, totally. probably. Hey, confess that you're lying. Do it. Can you just confess? Can you please? Tell Thank you. everybody that you've been telling lies. Right. And now Egwene weighs out her options because this is the problem. Is right. She can't just. <laughs> this is so good. Be quiet. No, she can. She and can't also, she's called a liar. She's got to take the martyr martyrdom stand, which <laughs> like is that. fine. She <laughs> so totally funny. can at this point. She does so much, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna point out all the things that I find funny. But okay, it's good. Okay, is it everything? It's everything. This it's is all pretty the things. good. It is. I do love this chapter. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. No, I love this great. chapter. So far, my favorite. Yeah. Because I thought my other Egwene chapters were my favorites, but no, this one is. T- yeah, it's t- a t- solid t- one. Like, yeah. I do really love her, the way she twists Elida. She just, like, completely outplays her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's just the high road because Egwene's like, <laughs> okay, haven't spread any lies. The Shanchen are not working for Rand. And to say anything else would be to violate the three O's. Yeah. And then Elida's like, <laughs> you haven't even taken the three oaths and she goes i did in my heart i didn't that's what really and that's, matters and it's even better than all of you right because all of y'all i'm better than all of y'all because it means more to me than it does to you yeah because nothing's forcing me to keep my word but i am anyways, but I am anyways. it's kind of funny like it is kind of like <laughs> okay all yeah. right Egwene. and also and then she goes yeah. and i'm a dreamer and i've dreamed that the shanchen will attack the white tower yeah and also and true and also important that i mean she's told mm-hmm. she told sylviana sylviana was supposed to pass a message along was supposed to yeah but anyways now, elida tries to play it off like Egwene is still just a big liar mm-hmm. pants on fire yep and Egwene calls her out on the fact that everyone in this room knows that she's not lying right and we must consider the Shanchen a threat. Yeah. Also, all of the reports coming from everywhere. Like, I get at the very beginning when the Shanchen arrived. Remember with the whole Pedro Nile thing, like crazy reports were coming out. No one knew what was going on because the West Coast was like in complete chaos and there wasn't any yes. like reliable yeah, yeah, reports. Yeah. But now it's been a while. Oh, yeah. And like the Shanchen. They've moved in all their foreign everyone livestock. Everyone knows. Everyone and knows. all their foreign plants. Yeah. They've done it all. Yeah. Lots of invasive species, You think I bet. that they're, li- they're listening to the signs between borders? that are like, please are wash not. off or rinse off your boat before you bring your boat no back over the... No zebra mussels. They're Come a on. problem, Oh, okay? man. Seriously. And also Elmwood... Dutch Elmwood disease. Yes. Also that. Yes. Ugh. It's a big one. Seriously. Yeah. Don't bring firewood across provin- provincial lines. Well, I was also yeah. thinking of like meats and fruit and stuff from That's like... true. Other countries. Yeah. You can't fly them into here. Yeah. That sort of stuff. But anyway, so... Yeah. She also tells them about how she remembers having the collar on her neck and it still haunts her nightmares. And then they're all just like silent. That was a good mic drop. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sorry. I was just thinking of a funny story oh, of is my it younger when days. When we were watching Border Patrol no, all the time when we were No, young? this one is oh. is this one was it used to be on all the time on Saturdays <laughs> when we were like getting ready to like go out for dinner and stuff. <laughs> yeah. We used to always have Border Patrol on. Great show. Yeah. Hilarious. I know. <laughs> But I could have been on my own my own episode of Border Patrol oh. because there was a time when I was going through the states to go to Toronto. Yeah. Because all Canadians know that the high the one highway in Canada, yes, there is only well, one. Well, the one to go from Winnipeg to Toronto, Sucks. you have to go through all of like Northern Thunder Bay around the Great Lakes, and it's no, it's not. There's good. one highway. But it's, it's better, and it's, it's called faster. Highway Number One too. No. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it's fine. That part is bad. Yeah, it's through the Canadian Shield, they have to like blast through rock to even yeah. make the. So the point highway. of this, the point of this story, right, is that I was going to Toronto back, and I was my one of my buddies 
lived in Toronto, and I was bringing a bunch of stuff that his mom wanted him to have. So I stopped at his mom's place. And uh, you should also mention that he's, he's fi- Filipino. He's Filipino. So yes. any Filipinos know where I'm going with this. So, of course, it involved, I didn't know, but it involved a whole lot of home-cooked food. I had uh-huh. no clue. Yeah. So I loaded up the trunk with a bunch of stuff, and I drove down to the States. And then when it got to the border, they're like, hey, do you have anything in your car? I was like, nope. <laughs> All good. They're like, you got any food, meat? And I was like, nope, Nope. all good. And they're like, okay, pull over. (laughs) And then I got inspected and they came out after like an hour and a half. And it was like, do you know what's in the back of your car? And I was like, not really. Just a bunch of stuff my buddy's mom gave me. And they're like, come look. And it's like all food. (laughs) It's all food. They let me take it, actually. They did end up like They let me leave. (laughs) (laughs) And then you had to get back up into Canada. Yeah, that wasn't as bad. That wasn't as bad. But the way in was like, oh <laughs> my gosh, that's actually really funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that rings a bell, but yeah. like so long ago. I know, I know. I forgot that happened to you. <laughs> okay, but seriously, fear the Shanshan. Right, Especially that's, as Aes Sedai idiots. Seriously. But remember, they're so far away, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, mm-hmm. until they learn traveling. But it's like, guys, you you yeah. know traveling now. Yeah. You know it's an option. It's a, it's on the table. You know that. As an option. Mm-hmm. But Elida is just awful. That's the problem. That's Because true. the rest of them are kind of arguing that, like, we actually probably should be concerned about them. Yeah. And Elida's like, no. Well, it's also really good to know that other sisters are at least trying to do something, even if it is just asking Egwene questions. Yeah. Like, trying to be prepared or at least a little bit to start taking it seriously. Yeah. Even if Elida's the worst. Yeah. Now, Elida's obviously pissed at Egwene for making her look stupid. Right. And so she's like, you need to kneel and beg for forgiveness right now. <laughs> yep, you gotta do I'll it. I'll lock you away and keep beating you anyway. Seriously, do it. Come on. Do it. Kneel and beg right now. Come on, right and here. And the sitters all glance around at each other, watching this, like, play out. Yeah. <laughs> and Egwene's like, and if I don't, like, then what? I love Egwene's thought process, yeah. too. She's like, well, this is how it's going to go. You're not going to like how this goes. Mm-hmm. It's like, nobody's going to have a good time well, today. Well, she thinks to herself, oh, Elida, you forced my hand here. Yeah. This is your problem now. Uh-huh. Okay. And Alita says, you will kneel one way or another. Right. Now we get into the cat catching in her own words. Uh-huh. And she starts to embrace the source. And then Egwene says, oh, you're going to use the power on me? Do you need to resort to that? You don't have any authority without channeling? Which is funny because that's very reminiscent of the argument that Egwene just had. In front of Yukiri and Doacine. Yeah. Which is like, oh, does the power of the Amarillin Sea come from channeling? Because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, you can't be Amarillin because you, you barely you're, channel. You're fork rooted. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and she's like, is that where authority comes stupid. from? And they're like, oh, actually, no. No. <laughs> Turns out, no. Okay. All fine. right. Got me. Yeah. <laughs> And Elida keeps digging herself into this bigger and bigger hole. And Egwene starts calling her out on everything that she's ever done. Yeah. To force people to obey. Like disbanding the blue and taking the shawl away from his sister. And then finally saying, and have you told them about your new fun idea? About your new fun oath? Yeah. The one where like you have to obey the Amerlin and right, just like. at all times. Yeah, exactly. That one. You got to support you and, and love you. Magically <laughs> bound to do that. Right. And make her sandwiches every day. Exactly. And, yeah. Everyone. <laughs> So many sandwiches. <laughs> this was a huge mistake. Well, <laughs> you know what? There's only like 30 in the tower. That's true. That's true. You could have like... A I would argue schedule. though, having 30 sandwiches a day is still too many yeah, sandwiches. But, then you, but as Elida, <laughs> you could choose the best one, right? I, I mean, you're not wrong. You could have them brought, made and brought to you. Sure. And then you could choose the ones that you are like, that's the kind I want today. Yep. Right? You're, you are technically correct. I would correct. like an option of 30 sandwiches every day. You do. It's called a menu and restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> you technically. But a lot of doesn't <laughs> They just don't make them like ahead I of time. <laughs> I'd like to see them first. Yeah, pictures on a menu. Yeah. We have that. That's an option yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, I, I, want I also it in don't front want to of... pay for them. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that I option. want an oath. <laughs> yeah. I want an oath of 30. <laughs> anyway, okay. Okay. Yeah, nothing more important to talk about this chapter. Yeah, and Elida's like, oh, that was that was just speculation. I was just talking. I was just saying crazy things. I was things. just saying crazy <laughs> things because... <laughs> you know how it, it is. It was just for fun. Just thoughts I said out loud, you know. Yeah, you know Sometimes it is. Sometimes I'm crazy. Yeah. And... It's funny, too, because in the back of Egwene's mind, even now, she's like, ooh, if Elida's Black Aja, then technically she can lie about this. She can just lie, but she doesn't lie. She doesn't. She's she not just, Black Aja. 
Like, we no, know we she know knows. That. Like, yeah. But. I mean, even Egwene at this point, I think she knows. Yeah. So, Egwene can see that Elida is starting to channel air to gag her. Yeah. And so she's like, oh, good. Go ahead. Silence me then. Right. And as Amerlin, shouldn't you be able to talk your opponent into obedience? And then so Elida doesn't gag her. And Elida's getting so frustrated. <laughs> and obviously he's trying to shut down this whole conversation. But Egwene takes the opportunity to say something like super obscure, some quote that only the brown sisters like the one bra- appreciate. Yeah, I read it over and basically saying that an Amerlin has the moral obligation to explain her actions to everybody. Yeah, Egwene, I'm going to compliment her memory. I mean, it's... It's the thing with the memory in all books that, yeah. like, there like, has to... you can to... recite this shit word for word. Yeah. Like, although people would be astounded by the movie and TV quotes that I can just pull out of word for word from nothing. That's true. Like, I can recite all of Finding Nemo. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. But that's only because I've watched it 50 times. Exactly. Like, we didn't like, study this one quote. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things you got to kind of suspend some of your disbelief when you're reading books, because if it was realistic, I would never remember anybody's name. <laughs> I'd be like, who are you? No. It's like, but yeah. here's the thing. I wouldn't say, who are you? I would just never call that person by their name. And then the entire series would go by 15 books. And like, I never, I just never asked you your name again. And I don't know. And now it's way too late for me to ask you your name again. Because yeah. like, I should know it yeah i'm pretty comfortable asking people for their name i'm not okay i just like don't i just avoid it yeah yeah and i work really hard to remember people's names like that's a thing that i like consciously do yeah i i don't yeah i know you don't and it's not i'm not out of malice it's just like no, out I of know. like i just i just no, not it's I just can't. the way brett's brain works it doesn't that's he it just, just doesn't it doesn't work very well at the best of times <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I attest to I am, that yes i am barely hanging on here so yes, like forgive can, me the I can, I can be the person who <laughs> corroborates that information for you you agree yeah okay, okay anyways she remembers this quote. Siobhan's like, like oh, yes. And Siobhan's like, I also yeah, remember this. Love yes. it. Yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's about an Amerlin. Did you tell me what it was about? I did. Okay. You should explain your actions to people. Okay. Yeah. Elida doesn't like to explain anything to anybody. Oh, never, no. Yeah. And then that's when... Egwene is like, hey, take this opportunity to walk us through why you kidnapped the Dragon Reborn. Yeah, explain your actions, basically. Yeah. yeah. And Elida's like, oh, well, we would have kept him secure in the tower. At this point, Elida should stop answering Egwene's questions. There's a lot of things she... Well, this is the issue, too, because like now that she's in this situation, she really doesn't have anywhere to go where she can come out on top. No. She shouldn't have put herself in this position in the first place. But she didn't know she was putting herself... In this, that's because she's arrogance. arrogance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the issue. That is the issue. But this is the situation Egwene keeps finding herself in. Every time we're in a situation with Egwene, when she's in front of Aes Sedai, who are telling her to behave like a novice she just doesn't and then they have nowhere to go yeah it's over and over it's rinse and repeat <laughs> for Egwene at this point like that's why she's getting so good at it because mm-hmm. every single time she has any lesson she's practicing this like literally for this moment yeah she's been practicing this is her Super Bowl <laughs> good reference Thank because you. the Super Bowl just happened Today. and Taylor Swift won the Super Bowl from what I hear yeah I never know how exciting the Super Bowl could be until you're like hey like she's coming from Japan we don't know if she's gonna get there in deal. time she, and, and then she got Usher. there in time Usher and then Usher had, and apparently he was on roller skates show. or something like he was crazy yeah. yeah okay not apparently he was yeah amazing I watched it. yeah yeah I think that those are the highlights from the Super Bowl so I don't I don't know anything else uh-huh. yeah yes Okay. Super great. It's good. 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 Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anyway, this is a great Super Bowl. This right. is what she's been preparing for. Yeah. Is this showdown specifically? <laughs> she does good. I think so too. I would say she Taylor Swift's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me too. Honestly, you know what? it's my goal of life to Taylor Swift anything. She so... made it on time and she won. Hey. Yeah. What more can and you ask for? And also, like, literally is conquering everybody and yeah. everything. Yeah. That is Taylor Swifting it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, anyway, Elida is backpedaling at the moment about why she kidnapped Rand and her plan here. She really is losing control of all of this. It's not good. Yeah. No, she's like, we would have kept him secure in the tower until the last battle. Of course. And then Egwene quotes the, I never can say this word. Cariathon. Cariathon. Prophecies of the dragon. Cycle. Yeah. And Elida looks at her like a confused dummy. Yeah. (laughs) It's basically like. Because she doesn't even know. 
she has no idea. Yeah. And Egwene is like, idiot, that's the dragon prophecies. And well, it's the whole you point. You captured like, him before he yeah. did the things. He has to be able to do yeah. the things. So he can't be locked away because then how would he literally, he literally needs to fulfill prophecies. Yeah. Because so, she's like, uh, he hadn't even gone to Ilion. Yeah. And got the crown of swords yet. And this is actually like a kind of interesting argument too, because this is the whole like fate aspect of the wheel of time where things have to happen and do happen even if it's not the way we expect right but elida is like it doesn't even matter because the prophecy would have to be fulfilled and Egwene catches her and like oh so you're saying your your, plan your plan's destined, destined to, to fail. fail yeah and it's crazy but it's like that's literally kind of what it means it couldn't possibly work yeah but and then also Elida's like, like maybe oh, no yeah. no no i'm blaming everything on the rebels at how this about point? the rebels this <laughs> is actually your fault right but here we go. And then starts tearing into Egwene about that. Yeah. This is the big one, though. And then Egwene says, coward. That sets her off. That's the one. That's the one. Yep. Because she is and doesn't like to be called that. But then we get the sickest burn in, I think, the thi- the, the biggest one we've seen so far. It's pretty okay. good. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. I don't know. My favorite is still to tell you about my journey would be as tedious to explain <laughs> as it was to experience. Yeah. That's still my personal favorite. I like Matt's where he's like, oh, I bet he's never even seen a high tower in Master High Tower. Yeah, I don't get that one still. But that's, <laughs> that's <okay>. fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But Egwene's okay. okay, you're a coward and a tyrant. I'd name you Dark Friend as well, but I suspect the Dark One would perhaps be embarrassed to associate yeah. with you. <laughs> It's so good. And here's the thing. Dark One doesn't discriminate. He takes <laughs> all idiots. That Dark One, he takes all idiots who are willing. Well, that's because it's a pyramid scheme. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it's like, matter yeah, I'll take your you money. Yeah. yeah, I'll take it I'll if take you your... insist. I'll take your loyalty. It's fine. Have you yeah. met literally any of them? I know. It's They're good. They're all dummies. Even some of the Forsaken. Yeah. Dummies. Dummies, morons, and idiots. idiots. DMI. I know. Okay. Now... Elida screeches like this is it for her she's so angry oh yeah that's the one because she doesn't even quit because she's like you name me dark friend it's like no you're the dark friend it's like that was she actually (laughs) didn't name you dark friend I know that's so funny too right she's like I would but I'm not yeah and then she slams Egwene back against the wall with the power and is like screaming yeah for the record so when she slams her that's when the pitcher that Egwene is holding breaks that's Um, where all the glass comes from Okay, the pitcher of wine. Yes. Because the wine sprays everywhere, and it's red wine, so it's dramatic. Yeah, but also, like, the glass starts cutting her. Yes. So there is also blood spraying everywhere. Okay, but then Elida does start, like, slashing her with the power. Yeah, like, with the air. Yeah. The air beatings. Yes. Yeah, that that's happening. So then it's, like, the cuts and the glass and the beatings, and yeah. it's, like... The beatings all are making the blood spurt out. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's all of it. Yeah. And so here's a new Harry Potter reference that we, I can you can correct me if you remember that we've ever talked about this on the podcast. Okay. Now, there's a moment where there's a spell where you use magic to make a bunch of cuts on somebody. Oh, this. Um, yeah. Do you remember it? Oh, man. Oh, so you're close. It, do- it, it is starts an with S. an S. It does. And it has to do with um, Snape. The book. The and book. The, book. the Half-Blood Prince. Yeah, that's yeah, the one. That's the one. In the potions book. Uh, it's like a double S. It's a double S. Sectum Sempra. S- yeah, there you go. That's it. That's the one. But what's interesting, so it's Latin, obviously, uh, okay. in Harry Potter. Yep. Sectum Sempra. So Sectum in Latin is secto, which means severed. Okay. And sempra is a Latin word, semper, which means continuously. So the spell, when you say it, is severed continuously. Yeah, that makes sense. And it just, like, keeps making cuts on someone, basically, till they bleed out and die. And then there's a counter spell, which stops it, right? And it's sort of something, whatever, that Snape made up or something. But that's what I pictured. Okay. I thought Elida was, like, cutting into Egwene with the power. Okay. Because I knew there was glass, and she was like... there were cuts and there was whips of air and she was like bleeding and bleeding. Yeah. So uh, that's just what I pictured. I like that Magical too. cutting. Yeah. Whipping. Yeah. You know? It's not, it's just regular cutting, but with like glass shards everywhere and then like the. And the air also. Like it's a whole thing. Yeah. But anyway, that's just what I thought of. Yeah. And I think that's new. 
Okay, I don't you, know. You know. I think it is too. We might have talked about you know it when in you the said that books, you but... you lined up the shot glasses and you yeah. said you had a Harry Potter reference. Were you thinking of something else? I thought you were going to do something about the Egwene saying, "Ooh, I can't tell lies because like there's the whole like, mm. oh, I can't tell." There's something about that. Right? Yes, I must not tell lies. Right from Order of the Phoenix. I thought that's what you were going to say. Yeah. Okay. I must not tell lies. Yeah, like the pen on the skin or whatever. Oh yes. Yeah. Also cutting of the skin. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Cool. Cool. Well, okay. gimme, gimme. Okay. So I do have these shot glasses. Now it's not very romantic what we're taking shots for because it's like bleeding and hurting people. Mm-hmm. However, yes. tomorrow, <laughs> well, not tomorrow, but tomorrow when this episode comes out. So this episode comes out on February 13th and that means the next day is February 14th. Which and, is Valentine's Day. Which is Valentine's Day. day. That's the thing. Okay. That is <laughs> yeah. the thing. Okay. Real roundabout way of saying that. So when Debbie sent us shot glasses, one of them was from Verona Mm -hmm. in Italy, which is the setting of Romeo and Juliet. And she told us all about it. But we've actually also been to Verona. Yeah. That was one place I really wanted us to go to in fair Verona. Mm -hmm. And so we also have a Verona shot glass, but it's different. It is. That's very cool. And so both of us are going to take our Romeo and Juliet Verona shot glasses to cheers. 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 Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, oh, man. That was more full than normal. Yeah, and I gotta say, that's probably the most celebrating we're gonna be doing for Valentine's Day. No, I'm gonna cook you dinner. I know, but it's like, it's a Wednesday, and like, we got a bunch of stuff happening. Yeah, I know, (laughs) lots of things. And I actually think it's funny, because Romeo and Juliet, although (laughs) romance, in the end, (laughs) in the end, lots of violence, right? Yeah. So it fits. It's really good if you stop, if you stop it like halfway through. And even then. Even then it's not great. No. Yeah. Lots of killing. Yeah. As I get older, I'm siding less and less with the kids of all these. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, we just watched the like the original Little Mermaid. I know. It's like I I'm actually not on. I'm not on Ariel's side at all. And I was like, whoa, I'm totally on the dad's side. Yeah, like 100. Yeah. percent Like, no, no, you are not in love with this guy that you who saw you from saw afar once. once. Like, no, no, you're not. Don't go to the crazy sea witch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. I don't even care. <laughs> Like all the dis every di- every every Disney every, movie every of all of them, but <laughs> yeah. isn't that just the way? Okay. That's why Disney kills off the parents immediately, so they can let the teenagers. Because do- otherwise, <laughs> oh my n- gosh! None of it okay. Would- <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay, okay. okay. So Egwene is just being beaten. Oh yeah, lashing, lashing, lashing. Luckily, this is what I've been saying. She's been preparing for this moment. Oh yeah, the beatings, all the beatings. It's so good. So. The other Aes Sedai start kind of shouting at Elida. They do. One talks calmly and is like, Elida, have you gone mad? And then another one is shouting and is like, Elida, you can't use the power to punish an initiate. Well, she says you're breaking tower law by using the power to punish Egwene, which is an important setup oh, for the line. Oh, then that's Brain who says that. Yeah, so and like, the line that Elida, it's, she's setting her up. She says, I am tower law. Yeah. And, and I then could just, starts like, to point at the sisters and is like, you all mock me behind my back. I know you do. You're ungrateful and everything I've done for you. And she's just like, oh my gosh, going she's off. She's yelling at the Aes Sedai while the lashing's happening to yeah. Egwene behind. And then she goes, take this as an example. And then she spins around pointing at Egwene. But while she was monologuing, not monologuing, while she was screaming in crazy fury. Right, yeah. Egwene was slowly forcing herself to stand up while still getting beaten with like blood flying. And now Elida's pointing at her and Egwene is just standing there staring at her. Yeah. And Egwene says, and what am I to be an example of, Elida? Yeah. And everyone's shocked because they can all see the weaves beating her, obviously. Yes. And anyone else in this scenario would just be like dead on the ground. No. And (laughs) Egwene thinks mentally, thank you, wise ones. Thank you, Aiel, right. for teaching me about this. And also thank you, Elida, for giving her lots of beatings to practice. Honestly, to and stage. it wasn't Elida really, but like it was Sylviana who yeah. didn't stop and did her duty. And yeah, so here's well. the thing. Well, that's the thing that... <laughs> Full um, circle. <laughs> well, that's the thing that Egwene praises her for, even though it means that she's getting hurt. Yeah. And I mean, am I pro-beating people? Absolutely not. In this setting... It's worked in a way. Makes favor. for a pretty cool scene. It does. That's where we're landing on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. 
So everyone's just shocked, and Egwene is like, I wish I wasn't needed here. I wish the tower had a grand Amerlin in you. I'd be willing to accept execution if it meant leaving the tower with a competent Amerlin because the White Tower is more important than I am. Can you say the same? Yeah, I know. It's it's so funny because this is, again, one of those, like, the thoughts of Egwene, she's tripling down on the martyrdom because... Oh, my God. Oh, it, so much. she ever? And it's just this extra bit of show it for is. these sitters. It right? is. I yeah, know, but it's like, oh, the beating's bad, but nothing is comparable what would be the to what Elide is doing. <laughs> okay, I'm asking just as a general question. Okay. How many sitters are in the hall? Three from each Aja. And there's no more blue. Yeah, correct. So 18? If that's three times six, it yes. Is. Okay. <laughs> so, so don't make me do mental math here. Okay. And now there's a, there's a lesser consensus and a greater consensus. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, okay, because I'm going to give you my thoughts at the end here. Of but, like what's going to play out right, here. Right. Because these are three sitters. Yeah. F- five sitters, I mean, who are all witnessing this. Yeah. Right? And so I th- they would need more than five, technically. Yeah. How many was the bare minimum to pull down? Oh my goodness, I'd have Swan. to. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, I think it was what? What was it like? Eleven? I can't remember exactly. Yeah, you're making me do math on that um, and subtracting I'm and you multiplying. Do some math. I know. No thanks. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Not about after, that. especially after that shot. A bunch and... of vodka and whiskey here. Yeah, I know. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. Because I'm just thinking. I don't think five is enough. No, definitely not. But they could go and probably talk to their other yeah sitter friends. Probably at this point, and Egwene has probably made an impression on others. Yeah. So what what are you saying? So are you thinking that this is like okay? Like, yeah. Let's okay. finish this scene. Yeah, because you're like saying a bunch of words. I here. know because <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud now at this point. So okay. Elida can't answer what Egwene is asking, but she starts shrieking. You want an execution? An execution would be too good for you. And she's like shouting about putting Egwene in captivity forever. And then if she can't get her shit together, like then she'll be executed. It's like, yeah, she's a dark friend and she's forsaken the grace of the Amaralyn seat. And And then she shouts to the guards to come and get Egwene. Yeah, basically. And carry her off. But the beatings continue. And Egwene has lost a lot of blood. And so she's like kind of passing out. Thinking that her battle from within the tower is over one way or another. Yeah, not kind of passing out. Like she passes out at the end. Oh, does she? Yeah. (laughs) It's like she's she lost a lot of blood. (laughs) She's done. Yeah. So the servants rush around to go like give Elida's orders. Yeah. But... We're kind of left hanging here. We're left hanging a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we don't know how this played out. We know that the other five Aes Sedai, like, don't want Elida doing this because, like, you can't. And then Elida went, like, full dictator, crazy rampage mode on a novice is what, like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of layers here. And these are yeah, a lot everyone of... everyone will know about your insubordinates. Like, that's yeah. something, right? Like, like, there's a lot of stuff happening. So where do you think we're leaving this? Like, you were, you're kind of saying, like, oh, lesser consensus. Can we get Elida booted out? Like, is that what you're saying? Are we yeah. replacing her? Yeah. Like, what's... what's the problem? Is, like, are they third. gonna Are they going to call, like, an immediate hall meeting? Like, emergency... Yeah, because Eli- <laughs> All the tower Elida meeting. might succeed in getting Egwene into a cell yeah. at this point. But for how long? But for how long? Right, okay. And then if we call Elida to trial... Sure. Especially to... So do you think this is like the big, the big thing that's going to push... Like the catalyst, I think is the word, yeah, that yeah, sets yeah. the, let's get Elida out. Out in motion. Yeah. It might. If these five sitters yeah. have any wits about them, they're going to call an emergency hall meeting. They're going to be like, okay, it, she, went, she went full crazy mode. Now's the time. <laughs> okay. And then they call some kind of trial, some kind of something. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'd have to call Egwene to also be there. Yeah. Or something. And then... I'm pretty sure it doesn't even have to be like a trial. It just is like a hall. Uh, it's a meeting. We've decided. And we're, we're like, the we're anymore. not... Yeah, you're out. Yeah, exactly. It does, it's not like a criminal trial or something like that necessarily. No, That's not although how it works. there is some stuff that there, does need to be on trial. There can be. There yeah. can be. But like for taking Elida out of the Amarillin's like position, position for now. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking like we're the rebel where it's like, oh, like we will have uh, we'll have no Amarillin for a little bit until we figure out who's going to be Amarillin. But right now you're not it, Elida. Yeah. So like, yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that that's sort of like the we move Egwene into the position. Yeah, you think so? 
Well, I th- well, I've thought that all along. I know, but like, in in how how does that even become a reality? You I don't know? know. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like logically, if everything goes and works smoothly with people doing things they should do, <laughs> sure, that would be great. Yeah. The unfortunate piece is that the tower is split and people all have their own motives and then there's also black aja meddling mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in everything yeah so yeah yep do you think Egwene's uh waking up in like a cell yes okay not dead not dead oh phew okay no <laughs> yeah uh, oh yeah that's it hey, that's that's the yeah, one that that's killed it. you got that's her the yep. one. it's elida <laughs> killed Egwene. Could you imagine? <laughs> just like, it's like Frick there's off. five other ice and ice sitting here. Yeah. With so much should have yield her. Well, and honestly, though, like this is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. No, yeah. no, it's not. It's not good for Elida, and that's good for Egwene. Yeah, I okay. think. I think that this is good. I I left this chapter feeling good. Yeah, you should be very worried then. I know. If you're feeling good ever. Oh, no. I'm just I saying. I just love a win. It just felt like a win. <laughs> she got to, like, tell off Elida. Yeah, you in, like, know? a super backwards way. She really got to tell off Elida. So, right. like, whatever happens after this, this was a win. Yeah. Okay. Egwene Taylor Swift, the Super Bowl. <laughs> did it. She did it. She did it. <laughs> okay, you want to hear the plan for next chapter episode chapters right? chapters yeah yeah we are doing chapters 17 and 18 with tyler yeah i heard he's coming over he is yes yeah because he was gonna come over on a day and i was like um <laughs> we aren't in the city that day and i was like ah interesting interesting yeah i was like you know <laughs> yeah you know we're going to calgary right yeah and you were like right so that we had to pick a different day yeah because <laughs> going yeah we're going so for some time, but. next episode we're doing two chapters yeah then one chapter yeah then back to two chapters okay then back to one chapter okay i didn't retain that at all two one two two one, one two yeah what up two one two yeah right <laughs> <laughs> is that from the office yeah yeah okay. i thought so oh gosh it's new york even, see i don't even know what's in my head anymore all right well before you we go ahead and win the super bowl i'm gonna say that this is part of the pattern now yeah it's part of the pattern Thanks so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Jamie Young, Megan, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Adam, Mozime, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Colby T, and Gabby Young. With music by Audio Nautics. Please be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 45 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show, like information on how to send us shot glasses, how to join our Discord, Discord, how to get in touch with us, you can visit the wheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping other people find us. And if you write us a really nice review and put your Instagram or Twitter handle in the review on Apple Podcasts, we will be picking people at random to be giving out some merchandise like stickers and bookmarks, and we'll send them out to those people as a huge thank you. Now be sure to tell a friend Riyadh because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.